Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Novel AI's image generation side. Now a lot of people when they do Novel AI, uh, they completely skip all the good stuff that is the image generation, I'm sorry, the other way, the text generation, run over here to image generation because it is such an amazingly powerful tool here. Um, it works really, really well. There's a lot of really, really silly things that you could do with it that you probably didn't think of. And we're going to kind of run through some of the different options here so you can get a general idea. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and pick how much different stuff we're actually going to be drawing from. Personally, for me, I like the full. It gives you just about everything you can possibly imagine. If I literally type in tree, and I'll go ahead and I'll run that one real quickly, it'll probably give me something tree-like. <laughs> Bingo, just like that. So again, I could do a tree in one of those pieces. But this prompt here allows you to define what you want to see. This is actually very lovely. I like that. So for example, uh, let's say I want to do a tree. I'm going to say winter, and I'm going to go ahead and add night. So now I've got three different pieces of information. And you notice, by the way, that it actually helps you out down here. Night vision device, I like that. Now, if I run this, of course, it's going to try to combine those tags into something like this. And you'll notice that my instant little piece here that was originally, you know, just a tree, we have something very similar, but now it's nighttime. So if I wanted to do a starry sky, for example, what it's going to do is probably create something that's going to be a variation. You can see we have a much stronger emphasis. Now we have a couple shooting stars down here on the right. Now, one of the really, really cool things that we have the ability to do here is we have the ability to blend two tags in together. So for example, if I type in T, tree, do a pipe, uh, by the way, if you're looking for that key on the keyboard, it's underneath the backspace. If I type in a tree and car, for example, and press enter, it's going to try to make me a tree car. <laughs> it looks like we got a bit of both here. So I'll go ahead and I'll run that one again, see if we get something slightly different. Yeah, we're getting a tree car. I don't know what these cars are, kind of a thing like that. Eh, not too good. Let me try a spaceship car. I'll see if I can get something a little bit more interesting here. Uh, not really. Let's do spaceship truck. <laughs> um, better, 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 better. It's a, kind of one of those sort of things. All right, now we have a Gundam. So uh, apparently uh, we're going down a very, very fun little route here. Um, yeah, kind of a thing like that. Now, of course, when you sit here and start fitting with this, it gets very, very challenging to get what you want sometimes. And you know, one of the pieces that you can actually do to make it a little bit closer to what you're trying to achieve is play with these options you have down here. The first one's going to be steps. This is going to be determining the quality of the image. Now, if I jack this up, you're going to notice here that this is actually going to cost me some of this uh, virtual currency that you get through your subscription, depending on what model that you have. The other thing you're going to notice is it takes a significantly longer amount of time. Now, this image looks pretty cool. It's got kind of like a that. I actually want to do pickup truck, pickup truck. Uh, let's see if we can do a little bit better job there. But the other thing you're going to notice is it's going to take a significantly longer time to... <laughs> yes, I like that. Uh, space backdrop. Uh, let me do one of those things. Uh, you'll notice it takes a significantly longer time to go ahead and actually generate the image as well as the... <laughs> what? I have no idea where we're going with that one, but that's perfectly fine. Underneath there, you're going to also notice an option that says prompt guidance. That's... Oh, I love that. That's so cool. It's like, uh, oh my gosh, it's like an SUT, I think they call them in Australia. So the other options we have down here are the ones that will allow you to control how aggressively this program will try to generate the image you've asked for. So at 11, you're basically in the dead center. Now, if I come down here and set this to, uh, let's go down to five here. So a minimum guidance, uh, just go low, just go with whatever feels right kind of a thing like that. So I run it, it's gonna sit there. Of course, it's gonna take a second here because we have relatively low guidance. And every once in a while, you run into this problem. And then when it's done, you get something that looks like this. <laughs> I have no idea. Now, if I take the problem guidance, I crank it up to 25, which is maximum guidance. You end up with something that kind of looks like this. Um, I'm not 100% sure what we have there. It does not look terribly good. I generally leave it at 11, uh, depending on what you want exactly to create here. Now, of course, if I did a cat dog and I uh, ran that one kind of a thing with half guidance here, we'll get something rough. Uh, kind of. I feel like the paws aren't quite correct there. But again, <laughs> look at the ends. This thing's so darn cute. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. But again, that's just some of the fun things you could do. Now, there's other bits that you could add to your tags here. Uh, for example, you could describe something as being detailed. So if I type in uh, detailed and run it now, it's going to go ahead and add this little bit to our tags, which is going to change it. Now, one of the cool powers you have is these little tiny curly brackets. When you apply curly brackets to something, what you're doing is you're increasing the emphasis on it, in which case we have a very, very, very strong emphasis here. So if I did a cat dog, I'll have some fun here. We'll do a horror. I'll do a bunny. Now, of course, I do a cat dog bunny and I, I'd say detailed. I get kind of a kind of, oh, look at the ears. It's so cute. It's got that little, oh my God, that is adorable. 
But now, of course, you have the ability to come in here and actually kind of tweak these particular items. So let's say I want to do watercolor as one of my options. I'll go ahead and put a little tiny bit of emphasis on it with more emphasis on detail. So when I run it now, you can see that it's going to give me an entirely different look. Now, let's say I want to do a black and white. So and again, running this again will give me the ability to go ahead and kind of tweak it. So again, our little kitty cat now is a black and white image. Now, one of the cool pieces here, this is so cute. One of the cool things that you have at your disposal, of course, is you can describe elements of the actual camera that you're doing. So for example, if I type in close up as one of my options here, what it's going to do is it's going to try to simulate you no know, close up shot. Now, if I do, uh, it's so cute. If I do a wide angle here, uh, just like this, what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to simulate a wider angle. And you can see that we're further back here. Now, let's say I want to do grass as backdrop. Now that I've combined a cat dog bunny plus a grass backdrop, of course, uh, we don't have a lot of emphasis on it. So what I'll do is I'll add a little bit more emphasis on it to try to kind of pull it away from some of those other qualities and see if we can get closer to actually having it. Oh man, these ears are the cutest darn things. And again, sometimes to help us out here, we can come down here and uh, crank up the prompt guidance like that, trying to get a little bit closer to what we're actually trying to achieve. And just like that, now you can see we have ourselves, our, our cat dog bunny, which has now got this uh, lovely little kind of piece right here. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they like to experiment with, you know, people, for example, you know, what they could do for you know, an example is, you know, I could say, um, man, standing, smiling, black hair, business suit, red tie. Now, of course, if I run all that, that's a quite a bit of information that has to see. And you can see that it did a pretty solid job of actually putting these things. I think my step guy is a little too high here. I'm going to turn it down. You start getting that kind of weird little fuzziness, which doesn't work here. So now, of course, I could say uh, cowboy shots. And of course, what we could say in the backdrop, we could say beach backdrop, because why not? And we'll go ahead and run that real quick. And it's going to go through its motions and it's going to try to put all that together. And it did a decent, you've got a bit of an angly thing here going on, which is a little bit goofy. And again, you could literally have fun with this forever. Um, there's a million and one combinations that you could do. But there's other options that makes this tool so freaking cool, in my opinion. And that's if you actually minimize this, you're going to see this button here at the top, which gives us the ability to generate some variations, upscale. And there's a cool one that says use as base image. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ignore that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say spaceship. Chrome and Nebula backdrop. Now, the reason I chose those particular options is I want to set myself up with a nice little baseline. Uh, I see that it ignored something very critical here, which was my uh, Nebula backdrop. Hey, there's my spaceship. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to order this to go ahead and uh, go ahead and use this as my base image. Now, when I do that, it's going to give me this thing that says image to image over here in the bottom left. Now, there's a million and one things you can do with this. And trust me when I say it gets sophisticated, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But one of the cool things you have is all these cool little pieces down here. For example, you have one called the palette swap. If I click that right there, what it will do is it will try to capture the image like this and just identify where all the edges are. Now, the reason this is so cool is because like, if you take a look at this like that, I can see the different pieces that you have. Now, if I wanted to, I can actually edit this. I can grab onto an eraser and I can actually erase this stuff over on this side. Now, the reason this is so impressive is this little piece here is now my fundamental component of my image. Now, if I press save, let me go ahead and I'll play with this a little bit. Uh, let's see here. We want to do spaceship, a red stripes, rusted steel. Let's go ahead and run that now. So what's going to happen now, and this is probably going to look terrifically terrible, is you can see that it kept the base image here, and it basically changed my backdrop. Uh, space backdrop. Let's go put that back in here. I'll go ahead and run that. I love the red striping, by the way. That is just awesome. This looks like something Chris Foss would do. Of course, oh, look at that. That is awesome. It looks like something out of 40K, like you can see. But the reason this is so powerful now is I can now use these base images to do all these different components. So I'll go ahead and go ahead back here. And again, we have our basic type here. We have the form lock, which basically would give us the ability to kind of hang on to things. And then we have this super fun tool called the scribbler. Now, I really like this tool. Let me show you why. So let me go ahead and grab the scribbler here. Here's my little palette. Actually, let me go back here. I want a, uh, we're going to use the landscape. It's going to be easier for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and convert this all black. And there we go. The magic of editing. <laughs> if I edit my stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a white pen here. And it's going to be nice and boring. And I'm going to draw the world's ugliest spaceship. Let's make this thing real hideous. Whoopsies. Let me go ahead and undo that real fast. There we go. So I'm going to make myself a really ugly spaceship. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and put a little uh, hatchy thing on the side and we'll put something like this again i'm not trying to be fancy here i'm just demonstrating how incredibly cool these tools are and you know i'll do something like this on the top because why not 
And then we have my fancy little scrubber wand. One thing I do want to do, though, is I want to clean a little tiny little nub off because uh, why not? One of these days, I get myself an actual drawing tablet. Man, that thing's ugly. <laughs> but it's exactly what I want. Now, let me show you why. So now that I have a base image, if I actually ask this to generate, what it's going to do is it's going to attempt to use my base image and actually kind of just sort of roll with it. Now, when I roll with this initially, we actually want to be using what they call the scribbler tool. The scribbler tool literally takes what I just drew, and it's, like I said, going to use it for the actual purposes of generation in a second. And you get something that looks a little like this. <laughs> oh, boy, that's embarrassing. Uh, it definitely got the rust part right now pretty good. And it kept the space backdrop. But you can see my incredibly ugly vehicle here. So we'll do Spaceship Chrome Nebula oh, Planet Backdrop. Oh, let's see, run it again. But you'll notice those forms are actually maintained throughout my different pieces of art here. So, you know, if I ask it to kind of tweak the sort of graphical components here and I run it again, it's going to give me something that looks completely different. Now, the reason this is so much fun to play with, and as you can see, I'm already enjoying myself thoroughly here, is because it allows you to recolor things. Now, if I imported a picture of my dog, for example, I could run in here, kind of tweak the heck out of things, and then spit it through. And actually, again, I can make this much, much cleaner than this. I don't have to make this ugly. I did this intentionally ugly just to show you how like versatile this particular tool is. So let's go ahead and now delete that image that we had right there, just for fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna kind of demonstrate sort of a fun way to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and type in hallway. Something really, really you know, kind of boring. I love, <laughs> my drawing is so embarrassing. That hallway is literally perfect for my demonstration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that, use it as a base image. Then what I'm gonna do is do my palette swap. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as a baseline to show you how quickly and easily I can actually edit it. So you can see I got plenty of detail here. Uh, if I wanna put like a gash on the wall or something, I could. So let's do hallway, grungy, rusted, moldy. Ah, uh, dark. And I just kind of let that one run for a second here. So now it's going to take the same form, my lovely little hallway here. And uh, basically, it's going to make it look a little junky. Uh, as you can see, uh, my handles are kind of there. My little door is sort of here. Uh, we sort of have this uh, kind of nastiness up in the top of the wall. Uh, things just got kind of uh, dirty. Uh, we'll do uh, detailed. We'll do ultra detailed. Uh, that's the one that everybody likes to use, ultra detailed. i got to be careful with ultra detailed, though, because sometimes when you run it, you end up with uh, unintended consequences as the details get details of their own. And then we end up with something kind of like this. Eh, that's okay. I'm going to let that one run again see if I get something a little bit more kind of, uh, oh, yeah. Now we're talking. So you can see here that my initial hallway that looks like, oh, ah, now looks like this after I've uh, done a little of the Silent Hill treatment. But one of the cool things here is I can still go in here and edit this. And let's say, for example, I want to put like a gash in this wall or something here. If I were to grab myself a white pen, and uh, I don't know why I do this, but I'm just going to kind of <laughs> like that. And it just eh, it looks pretty nasty. And again, it does not have to be pretty. Let's go ahead and run that one again. You'll notice right on this wall, right where I uh, drew my little nastiness, I've now got a little splurt. And it looks like part of that wall came down. And you can see just how effective this tool is for taking something that's you know kind of mundane and adding a little bit of details. Now, if we want to have a little bit of fun here, well, we'll stick to this and make it a little bit of fun. Clean, modern, sleek, white and blue marble floors. So now if we run this one, we're going to have a slightly different context. And I'm very <laughs> you could see, wow, that hallway has had a massive transformation. And my little gash in the wall is no longer a gash in the wall. We can see instead what we've done is that we've replaced it with these uh, two little sconces, kind of a thing like that. But it's just incredible what you can do with these particular tools as you're starting to build them. Um, this is a very, very slick tool. Like I said, uh, the nice thing is it basically doesn't cost any of these little points to run unless you want to do certain types of things like generate six of these at a time. Now, one of the fun things you could do here is I can say hallway and I will say sepia. We'll just add sepia as one of our options here. Sepia. Now, if I run this, it's going to give me six versions, but it's going to cost me a couple of those analysts there, which is you know not that big of a deal. I have plenty of them. Now, the interesting thing you'll notice here is almost every single one of these is very, very, very similar. Our little door at the end kind of changed a bit, but you can definitely see kind of the different variations that it can generate. Uh, what I usually recommend people do is keep their steps at 28 so you don't have to pay for any of the points. Find something you like and then start generating your variations off of it so that you can have a little bit more luck. Now, one of the cool things that you probably started imagining is um, what happens if I do this? You know, I have this uh, lovely thing that clearly looks to be a hallway. What happens if you ask it to be a forest? And now uh, what it will do is it will do the best it can with what it has. And unfortunately for us, because there's not a lot of tree-like things, it really doesn't know kind of how to run with it. So it creates this kind of fun little things. You know, if I come over here and say underwater, for example, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get kind of a palette swap here, which is the point. 
and you can see how we're now completely underwater and uh, it's pretty darn awesome and just how powerful these tools are and i could go in here and simplify these shapes significantly in order to make them more or less a door like if that's something that i wanted to do but this is awesome because now that you have something that can generate the story you now have something that can generate the art that goes along with it enjoy <laughs>